Rabbi Hassar to Rabbi Hassan. Um, Jody is the executive director and the GPS local project leader at North Shore uh, Community Association. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, Kelly and I had the opportunity to do site visits and we, we went to visit North Shore, we went to Bacoma, we went to Setil. And um, in the course of all of these site visits we, we met uh, a number of extraordinary volunteers and we met Walter Bisson who I'm telling you is a delight to meet and I hope you're going to experience that this afternoon. So go ahead, Julie. Thank you, Michael. Uh, I have to hold this far away. I have a voice that carries and I don't need a mic at times. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you all uh, for coming here today and thank you all for uh, listening to our presentations. Um, we are one of the last groups that was part of the GPS uh, from the North Shore, the North Shore Community Association. So today um, we're going to talk about recruitment and training process for the volunteers for the GPS project. And uh, we're going to talk about the retention of volunteers, uh, about the NSCA experience, and the various meetings that we share together with our volunteers. Before we go to the slide, us, uh, like uh, the guests say, uh, we've got some beautiful scenery photos here. Tadisac, the whale. Uh, we have uh, towards the Tilt Point de Mont, and the, uh, the uh, far left uh, is the uh, Manicouagan area in Becamo. Um Basically, this slide I'm not going to go through. It's just uh, talking about us, our nonprofit regional association, uh, founded in 2018. Uh, we're young, we're new kids on the block, uh, just 18 years old. Um, so basically, our, our our objectives, part of our mission statement, and uh, what the association is working for. Kelly, the North Shore. Wow, a big area. So as you can see that uh, the North Shore is itself is the second largest region in the province of Quebec. Uh, on the North Shore we have five MRCs. Well actually we have six. The very, very far left at the end over there, uh, that is uh, a territory that is the MRC Gulf of Serrano that is occupied by another grassroots organization called the Coasters. So all of the rest of the North Shore covers under our mandate. Um, we, uh, we have five MRCs, like I told you. We have Canapisco, which is uh, Shefferville and Fermont, uh, the Eau Côte Nord, the Tadassac region, Manicouagan, Des Comeaux, and uh, Cette Rivière, that's Port Cartier, Sotil, and the Mingani, Arche Saint Pierre. And into our region, I must say, in our very fur our furthest northern region, we have a English-speaking First Nations in Kalawa Chikamak. Pronounce that one. So that's in the Shepherdville region. Okay. So I thought that I might discuss this. How did we get to the GPS project? There always has to be a need in order to embark onto a project. So uh, what happened in 2015 and 16, um, we had the SAQ, the Seniors Action Quebec, that uh, were doing focus groups. Uh, they did focus groups and in 2015, we held one in, uh, in the Citadel region where we had 24 seniors that came out. And uh, through this focus group, we had, um, we had some identified needs. Uh, there, were, there were many priorities, but the top three priorities that came out from that focus group, access to organized social support and assistance for seniors, of course, access to health and social services in English, and accessible living arrangements, which I think is pretty much uh, similar to many regions of the province of Quebec. Um, out of the focus group report, what we did is that we, we took out, there's a minute, I'm just going to switch over here. Um, we took out uh, some of, the, the, um, some of the, the, the comments that were given to us by the seniors that participated in those focus groups. And uh, here's one that they, 
that came out of it. We would like to see a community liaison linked to existing services, helping seniors to find English resources, a volunteer peer-to-peer -peer support system that would check in on seniors, a form of a community outreach with a designated person for seniors. Too bad the minister is gone because that fit into our ITMAP program. Uh, so there you go. We had a focus group in 2015, and from there I had a list of priorities. This was all part of the GPS pro uh, SAQ project. So right there we had the need, the identified need for a peer-to-peer -peer support program for seniors. Now, um, a significant portion of the comments from the participants address the need to strengthen the system of social support among seniors. We know in our community that we have seniors that have already developed a volunteer base and we're reaching out to other seniors. And it was identified into that, that focus group is that we need to strengthen that support group. We had a base, we had to build it bigger. So there we go, that's why the GPS came in to function as of then. We can switch, Kelly. Okay, so the need. What we needed to do this project, we needed to have uh, senior volunteers age 50 and plus. Uh, we were told to have 10 to 12 volunteers for within the two communities. Uh, the two communities that were identified to take part in this project were the Cecil community and the Bacomo community, our two largest centers on the North Shore for the English-speaking community. And the seniors were to receive training, complete forms. Uh, Walter, I'll let you speak on that one. We're going to go back at uh, police checks. And then as of January 2017, uh, they, after the training, they started to do their visits. Okay, the recruitment strategy. We, how did we go about and getting uh, our seniors into the program? When I say evaluating our communities and surveys, over the years through many of our projects, whether it's uh, projects that we do with the Community Health and Social Services Network in promotion for seniors, we created surveys where we identified uh, seniors that would be participants into a volunteer activity. So we created a volunteer base, and in that survey, we had listed different areas where their interests would be volunteer. So we took that information, and we identified seniors who we can approach and see if they would be interested in partaking into this project. And um, so once we did that, we had a base of a volunteer. Then we went a step further. We went out into uh, different community events that we organized, and we introduced and we talked about the social, uh, the GPS project. We advertised it into our community newsletter. We developed a, um, a publicity like the Division Gas Bay did, put it on our Facebook page. Uh, we have a lot of seniors that are on to our Facebook page. And we also asked others to spread uh, the word of the project. So these are basically our communication plan, how we got uh, the seniors recruited into this. Now, uh, initially, Bay Come On, we were looking to have five volunteers, Satil, seven, and uh, we did not re we did not get the, the full amount that we were looking for, but we were pretty close. Uh, here you can see some volunteers in the Sitel region that are doing this uh, a training session. And uh, we had uh, four in Bekamo, six in Sitil. And uh, there were two others that were committed to the project, but it didn't really work out as in timing. Other commitments came up, so um, that's why. But, um, okay. Walter, I think we need to get you into this. I'm just trying to follow my notes where I can have Walter to speak. <laughs> okay, um, the barriers. Okay, the recruitment went well. Uh, we almost attained the amount of a number of volunteer seniors. Uh, but once we got into the project, there were barriers to the recruitment. First of all, it was an unknown project. 
And some seniors are saying, well, I already volunteer in my community. Uh, why do we need to do this? And so we were explaining what the project was, and they were asking questions. Then we got to the point where uh, we told them that they had to dedicate X minimum number of hours to this project. So that was like a little off-putting on the seniors. So we sort of, instead of saying three hours a week, we asked them to dedicate two hours a week. Of course, like uh, my, my colleagues in the other regions, uh, the travel. Uh, as uh, Michael said earlier, there was one senior in the Satilla region that traveled 100 kilometers just to go in, and, and visit with uh, an isolated senior. Uh, there was a problem. We didn't have the budget for it. We managed to have gas cards also, but uh, on the North Shore we have, it's a vast area with a lot of pockets of uh, anglophones at uh, various distances. So that was a little uh, difficult. The dedication to training, uh, it's just that uh, we were going to be in that area at that time. We had training and uh, so they basically had to stop and put their things down and come. So it was, it, they, these were some of the barriers to it. The paperwork. Yeah, I think that was the biggest barrier of all. And they couldn't really understand why they had to do so much paperwork. So I said, well, it's part of the process. Myself, as being an executive director and writing applications and doing up reports and performance, and I understood the whole project and why we had to have this paperwork. We had to have indicators. But trying to explain that to a senior volunteer was uh, kind of difficult. But what I'll do is I'll just let Walter talk a little bit about the paperwork. <laughs> Well, she was very, it, it, everything she's saying right up to now is really true. I wanted, and that was the paperwork that I think that was the thing that uh, everybody uh, balked at. And I know, having been in the mining industry and construction industry for the past 50 years, I've seen enough paper that I used to always say, I wish you wouldn't cut down another tree. <laughs> so basically, I said, listen, I'd love to help people out. I've done it all my life. I was heavily involved in the scouting industry, and I think it's it the greatest bit of thing that you can get to get involved in. Uh, it prepares you certainly for uh, for for the uh, for, for to, to volunteer to help other people out. And I said, Joe, Jody, you got to do something. I'll help you out, but I'm not doing all that paperwork. <laughs> so anyway, luckily with with the uh, North Shore Construction uh, sure. uh, Community Association. Community Association. NSC. Okay. I was thinking construction again. <laughs> Community Association, they, uh, they said, listen, would you, if we took care of the paperwork and you took care of the seniors, would you go along with the game? And I said, yeah, we'll give, you, we'll give it a try. So what, and, and we set it up now and it works like a chair. Uh, we, and we, make our, we do our work with our senior. And we call in to our girl in, in, in the office and she writes down marks everything that we've done. And then she'll say, okay, when you've got a chance, drop in and sign off. So we go back in, and it gives us a chance to, to, to talk to them about uh, other things. And, uh, oh, sorry. And uh, this is it, and this, and this is the program we've been following. And with that, it's working very, very well. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> still have some paperwork. <laughs> okay, next slide. Okay, what worked? Well, we have two communities, Satil and Bekamo, and I always use the expression, it's like comparing apples to oranges. Totally two different communities, two different compositions of the English-speaking community, whereas in Bekamo we tend to have a higher level of bilingualism amongst our, amongst our seniors, Satil much lower. Uh, many more challenges. Uh, we had a higher base of volunteer seniors in Satil uh, because this community was so used to looking after their own selves that they built their own structure, their own support system. And um, after advertising and talking about the GPS project at social events, and it was repetitious. We kept it going and going and going. We talked about it. We also said at our events, if you know anybody that would need to be reached out, please let us know. We'll let our volunteer senior know. So it was repetition, repetition. Um, 
We had a problem. We had the distance. We had the local project leader, LPL, that was based out of the head office in Bekomo. But we had Satil, and how does the LPL be in contact with the volunteer seniors in Satil? So what we did is, what I did is I got the staff together, we talked about the project, I explained to them and I said to the staff in Satil, you're going to have to be our assistant in this, in helping to fill with the paperwork. <laughs> so this is what we did in Satil too. So I would say that because my staff was on board, Everybody pitched in, it was a great project, and the seniors, they didn't have too much stress on their hands with the paperwork, uh, that uh, it went well. Okay, so we had uh, we had training, we had uh, the first and the second training was held in Bécamo with the coordinators and the three volunteers. Uh, this is, was a training that we did by video conferencing. Uh, we didn't have a trial budget to go to take the LPL to go to Satil, so uh, twice. So what she did is she went down in one, uh, at one time, and did two trainings at a time, but condensed it. And I think the condensed part of it is that they took out what was relevant, what was important from the feedback they had from the volunteer seniors in Bakamo. Okay. So there again, uh, training in Satil uh, was organized independently, like I said, because of distance. Um, the, the, the two training sessions that we had in Bakemo, we condensed it to one. And uh, I can tell you that when we did do that in Satil, it opened up more of the time and the floor to, for the volunteer seniors to discuss more. So if you're sitting at a training, I'm asking you to give me two hours of your time to come into the training, and then you only have 10 minutes to talk about it. But us doing it this way, we found that we had more time for the senior volunteers to, to discuss and give examples and give pointers to other volunteers. Okay. Well, the training documents, we had the confidentiality form. And uh, we amended it so it was signed off as one document, the famous police checks. Uh, we had uh, the volunteer assessment form, uh, the volunteer visiting form, and the GPS handbook. Like what Michael was saying, we created this as everybody into the GPS program, but each region has a specific area in the back of it for services in their region. So our volunteer seniors use this as a guide too. That was their Bible. Okay, so Walter, hey, that's a nice picture of you up there, Walter. <laughs> Uh, so, volunteer retention, we, right now we have two volunteers in, in Bekomo. We have four dedicated volunteers in Satil. We lost a few in Satil because, um, due to external factors, uh, moving away, sickness in the family, uh, so that was their basically priority. As of March 2018, uh, with all of our, uh, our Senior volunteers, but in the two communities, had a, a contact at 243. They had 243 contacts made with those seniors. And um, I just wanted to say that uh, the feedback we had is that our, our senior volunteers felt uh, supported and included into this process. So maybe, Walter, I can get you to speak and give them a little bit about it. We've talked about the GPS handbook, but no, basically, uh, as a as a volunteer, I had never seen uh, this uh, this uh, uh, this handbook until we did our training program, and uh, I was really am I was really amazed at the, the amount the number of things that uh, that we could help uh, seniors out with. Um, I, I mean, it was unlimited to me to see that you know, for motor impairment, for health, for. Uh, doing your income tax or abuse, that there's different that where, where we could go and get them help, which I never knew before. And it actually made it a lot, to, I, you know, as, as a volunteer, uh, I, I like what I'm doing now, 
because I think it's helping a lot of people. Uh, and uh, if you take a look at what we're, a lot of people are saying about trust, and it's true, when you make that first contact, they, everybody seems to have a bit of a doubt that, you know, maybe you're really not uh, rosy clean, you know. Maybe you're looking around for something. But I think that you have to just spend a bit of time. I, maybe I find it a bit easier because uh, I'm, I'm actually, if some of the seniors I've contacted, I'm over in the air. <laughs> so uh, I turn around and I say, well, listen, if, I'm not, if you don't want to trust me, I, I certainly couldn't trust you because I'm over in the air. <laughs> and they turn around and say, oh, are you really older than I am? You don't sound old. Well, I said, when you see me with my cane, you'll find out I'm old. But uh, I find that it does take time, but I think it's a workable thing. And once they, because there's a lot of people sitting back there, you know, uh, I find that a lot of people also sitting back feeling sorry for themselves. And you got no reason to be feeling sorry for themselves. They don't need to do a bit of thinking, you know. They, you got you to motivate them somehow because it's like I always say to my grandson, if you don't do what I tell you, I'm going to give you a boot in the pants. Okay. And I think there's a few seniors out there that I mean, actually, you might still be a boot. And, and, but, you know, you know, folks, I mean it. I, I think there's people that feel sorry for themselves, and I mean, there's no reason to feel sorry for themselves. I mean, you're alive. And I, I, I this one lady I'm talking to now, just, she's really down in the dumps, and I'm saying to her, you got, I got to keep you going. You're only 90. <laughs> you're only 90, but I got to keep you going. Uh, I gotta keep you going. So I, you know, I, the story I'm telling you now is I had a, I'm forming a new club called the Hundred Club, <laughs> and that if she wants to belong to the Hundred Club, then she has to follow what I tell her. <laughs> so she's saying, and what happens when I get in the Hundred Club? Well, I said you're going to be happy because then you're going to become 99, and you'll work your way back down. <laughs> so, so her last little conversation, last little conversation I had with her, she was say, saying to me, she said, "Are you sure you were checked out?" <laughs> I, 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 so anyway, but at least I got her trust. So as you can see, Walter, when he goes and visits that senior, he really puts the life back in. <laughs> but I, I, what I wanted, what I just uh, before we go, I wanted to elaborate a little bit more on seniors feeling. Go back, Kelly, please. The seniors feeling supported is that because we are part of a provincial network through the CHSSN, all four of us are part of the NPI, and with that, it's a network partnership initiative. So we're able also to offer different training, whether it's through uh, the CHAC, the Community Health Education Program, whether it's through partnership with Edge Kalua, where we uh, have, there's a training session going on on a particular subject. We call up the senior, say, hey, so so, we're having this video conference. You know, this will really help you in understanding and give you more information that will be a resource for you to give to the senior. For example, we did a video conferencing session on Edge Kalwa uh, back, and the subject was finding reliable legal information. We called up our senior volunteers, we asked them to participate in this. So they had another training and they felt supported in that way because whenever we saw an opportunity out there through our own network, we called up the senior, we asked them to participate and we explained that this, this could be resourceful information for you. So they were acting as a liaison to that senior also. The last slide. So volunteers in action. Here's one volunteer in action. And we asked to put, a, we wanted to put two examples up there of a volunteer in action. Um, one, one volunteer learned about a senior's dissatisfaction with home, the home health services that was offered through the CLSC. Uh, the volunteer was the one that heard about it while she was visiting the senior. So what we, she informed her about the program, the CAP, Santé Systems Accompagnement au Plaint. Okay, she explained to her how this procedure works. You need to go and make an official complaint in order to improve the system. So, uh, because our senior was informed about this service, then uh, our senior volunteer sort of relayed that information to the senior in need. 
So right now the next step is that we're going to go with her, or the senior volunteer is going to go with her to the cap, and then once she's there, we'll leave and we'll pick her up. But we're, we're channeling her into the proper way of dealing with issues. And in uh, the last example, which I'll let Walter talk about, it's with the edge of the water. Uh, you know, this this was uh, one of my, uh, my one of my seniors, and he was really getting a little concerned about uh, money, and uh, he was and he said, you know, I, I don't know if I can afford the place I'm living in anymore, and I don't know who to go to to get help, because I hear through the through the through the French system is that they've got they can go and get help from social assistance and this, and he said I don't know anything about this. So anyway, we had a training program on in in uh, housing for seniors. Uh, for housing for seniors. And uh, I got him, I said, well, you come with me, bring me, uh, come, come and see what we can do for you. And he came there, and he's had made contact since, and uh, they've gotten back to him, and uh, they're, they're, they're going to be able to help him out, so he's really feeling, really feeling great, good these days. Last slide. Uh, so there's our presentation on recruitment. Uh, we had a need. We had identified, we already had an identified database of seniors. We grew that database. We had challenges along the way, a lot of paper trails. And uh, then we had a few other barriers, but uh, overall it was, uh, it was a great experience. And we continue to carry on this because there's, you create something, you build it. There's a lot of hard work that was put into it. And for us, it will not stop, except for the paperwork. <laughs> but we will continue doing this, and, and hopefully we can get some funding that will cover the transport. So uh, there, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, sweat that was put into this. There's a lot of volunteer hours, and our hope is to carry on this into the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jody and Walter. Um, I was just wondering if you could enlighten us about this paperwork you talked so much about. What exactly did it entail and how much of the paperwork did the volunteers themselves have to do? Okay, uh, the paperwork uh, were assessment. First of all, it was the assessment form. There was probably, I think it may be five questions onto it that they had to fill in. Every time they went and met with a senior, they had to assess them, okay? So there were five questions. But every time that they conducted a visit, whether it's a phone call, because some of them were done from phone calls. We live on the North Shore like the Gas State. We have a lot of snow, we have snowstorms, so... Uh, but every time there was a contact made with that senior, there was a form that had to be filled out. And I'm thinking it's four or five questions. So for them, uh, I had one lady in Satil in, uh, from 2017 to March 2018. I just counted. She had 86 contacts. She's a volunteer. To do 86 papers, so uh, that was cumbersome. Uh, it's just like, I don't have time for this. And so that, that's what the paperwork was. Every time there was a visit, there was an assessment form that was done or a uh, form filled out about the visit. Thank you, Jody. <laughs>